we are going to cut the basic blouse. I hope you had a wonderful experience cutting the basic skirt. I will still encourage you to pay rapt attention because the skill you gather from this is going to help you in designing dresses because a combination of the basic blouse from shoulder to waist joined to a skirt makes it a dress. For this demonstration, the basic blouse you will need a lot of measurements. You need the bust measurement, the waist measurement, hip measurement, front waist length, back waist length, the back width, sleeve, on the arm sleeve, bicep, the blouse length, and the arm depth. These are measurements that you really need. So we are going to fold our fabric using the hip measurement plus two. Because the hip seems to be the fullest part of your. But there are some people, due to their shape, they may be far fuller bust and smaller hip. So you, I would advise you use the bust measurement, which is fuller. I'm going to mark it intermediate to make sure my measurement is accurate. So my hip measurement, which is 10 plus 2 is 12. So I'll mark. So now I can fold along my markings. Next, pin in place. So I'm using my clear ruler, my 2 inch clear ruler, to rule down 2 inches, mind you, for allowance. So I'm ready to start. For the basic blouse, we are just going to make the simple t-shirt line. So for the simple t-shirt line, you need 3 inch to construct it. So I'm going to measure down 3 inch. Measure across the top line 3 inch. And diagonally 3 inch. By positioning my ruler diagonal. And I'll square in 1 inch. So using my French curve, I will now blend the curve of the neckline that's created. So that becomes the neckline. Next is the, is the back width. The back width for this particular wearer is 15. So half of 15, that gives me 7.5 inches. Because our shoulders are not actually straight, they slope. We are going to take that half inch. It could be up to one inch. It depends on how your shoulder is sloping. Some people really have sloping shoulder. So you are the designer. Use your discretion. So I'll connect the. I'll take half inch down. Connect from there to meet the top neckline, the end of the neckline. So next, we are going to create the ham pole. So for the ham pole, I will use when well, we are taking the measurement. We have room for a shirt because we are going to attach sleeve to this particular uh, body's blouse. But if you are not attaching any sleeve, it's 8 inches. So the arm hole may be 16, that is the arm hole depth, and half of 16 is um, 8. But if I'm going to attach sleeve, I'll make it 10. Now I'll square a line across. This line I'm squaring across, you don't have to measure, just square a straight line across. But always align your your L square to ensure you have a straight line. So from this point, I'll measure down two inches, mark it. So here is where my bust measurement will be located, and one quarter of the bust measurement is nine inches. So I'll stop at 9 and I will square up from where the bust line ends upward. This will guide my construction of the arm pole. So using my French curve, you can see it's already shaped as if it's a arm pole. Position it till you are satisfied and draft it. And that's my arm pole. Next, I'm going to construct the waistline. So Aligning my L square for this particular wearer, our front waistline is 16. So the front waistline and the back waistline actually help you to locate your waistline. It is here I'm going to draw my waist measurement. The waist measurement for this wearer is 28 divided by 4, which is 7. I'm also going to add 1 inch for that, so which becomes 8. 
remember i added one inch extra that one inch extra is for that so i will locate the dark position by first of all looking for the midpoint of eight inches which is four then the one inch i will distribute it half on both sides half inch on both sides half on this side half on this side and i have then the dark length the dark length is determined by the fullness of the wearer's waistline because this wearer is slim the darts will be will be three inch at the top and four inch going down so this is the dart length now connect i'll connect the dart to create with diagonal lines next you locate the hip that but for this wear i'm using eight inches and i will use it as my hip here to locate my hip and the hip measurement is 10 remember when we're folding we said 10 plus 2 the 2 was for sim allowance so remember that often i've had students that forget and they measure 12. <laughs> so make sure you stop at your accurate one quarter of hip measurement so i'm going to connect the bus before I continue, I'm going to check if the measurement, the full length of the blouse co correspond with the blouse length I took while I was measuring the wearer. So I'm going to measure from here, just checking 24. And the blouse length I took was 24. So there's no need to extend it. But if it was shorter than this, then I would have extended it. Now, because I don't want this side of the blouse to droop, I'm going to take it half inch and so to finish up this blouse, I will add seam allowance, half inch around the neckline and one inch on, around the shoulder, one inch on the side. So the front blouse is ready, now I'm cutting out. So you can see the full finished blouse with all the parts. It was not difficult, I'll just repeat by explaining. We first of all folded our fabric one quarter of hip measurement plus two for seam allowance through the edge measure two inch down to start off which will be for your seam allowance then we we'll control the neckline three inch down three inch across and three inch diagonal one inch in we used our french curve to create the neckline and the next thing was to measure the back width you connect the line from the neckline tip to the new shoulder location and you, you with a line then from the top line to create the handhold, draw a line down. The line could be half of the handhold depth, which may be 10 if you're adding sleeve, which may be 8 if it's going to be sleeveless. So if it's sleeveless, because you don't want to expose your undergarment, also put a dart in the handhold so as to close it up properly. And where you stop after measuring down 10 inches, square a line across, that becomes your upper bust line. From the upper bust line, measure down two inches to locate the bust line. So you can see all the measurements we took while we are taking measurements, they are very important. So you take down two inches and along that line, measure the bust line and then measure one quarter of the bust measurements. And square it up. Very important. Draw an arrow upward. So it is this arrow that will guide you when you are constructing the handhold using the French curve. After that, we now located the waist position by using the front waist length. The front waist length and the back waist length helps you to locate the waistline position. So it's along here we now measured out the one quarter of waist plus one for that. And we then look for the midpoint where we created the darts. And the dart length is determined by the fullness around your tummy. So if your tummy, if you are full waisted, then your dart should be shorter mostly the one that points towards your hip then from this waistline we now constructed the dart from the waistline we now located the hip line and from experience between seven and nine and for this year i used eight to locate the hip and then i joined the sides using my ruler and my french curve or the hip curve to create the side i then added seam allowance half inch around the neckline one inch around the shoulder half inch around the handhold and one inch by the side and half inch bottom why i use half inch for the bottom because it's curved so that i won't lose this shape 
Now we are going to cut the back. We are going to use this front as a template to cut the back. Because this, the opening is at the back, I will measure 2 inch in. For us that are learning, but those that are experts already, that are very experienced in cutting, you can just use uh, 1 inch or 1 and a half. Then fold it in. You can fold it upward or fold it inward. Then you can now position your blouse, already cut from blouse. Make sure it's well positioned and aligned. And pin it place. So for the back, I'm not going to pin this particular part. You take a pin and insert it at this point. Just insert it there. Raise it a little and mark. And put an asterisk. Mind you, this blouse already has him allowance so that when you join it, it will meet there. So I'm going to do that and repeat it on the other side and mark it. And take this back one. I'll take this back, the front, fold it back, and draw a line first of all, straight here to meet the end. So this will help me create the back line. This will show properly. I want you to see what okay. So this line will connect with this. To create the shoulder for the back okay so now we are going to create the neckline because the neckline at the back should be higher from experience when you are cutting necklines you see later in the series when the neckline is higher at the front then it should be lower at the back or vice versa so for this particular one because the neckline is on the lower side then the back should be higher so i'm taking in down one and a half inch I square in one inch using my French curve I create the neckline so that's going to be my back neckline I'm reducing it to one it's still low so I've not added my spanner. now so I'm taking this upper one as the correct one it's going to try like that it's still important so now I'm going to trace out the old blouse. So I will take this back and recreate my seam allowance. Just for the neckline area. So I take this in, I measure it in. So I can cut now. So now I'm going to transfer the dart. Using the pin technique again, just put your pin there where you have the dart point. Raise this back and mark you can see another technique is you can just use your finger push it there and mark so those are two techniques so another one i'm marking here so what i'm doing now i'm transferring the dart from the front to the back blouse continue so another line you should point you should Transfer is the upper bust line, very important. I will show you the reason why. So I'm going to draw this line across because the back does not have fullness like the front that has bust. There is need to take the excess fabric so that it will not bulge at the back. So my center dart is going to be long, longer than the front dart. So I will draw it all the way to meet with the upper bust. Now I'm going to distribute the dart just like I had in front. So connect it and that is the back of the dart. So this is the, the front and this is the back of the blouse. See? So I'll put one notch here, then I'll put two here. But there's something I still need to do to the front because I don't want the front of my blouse to bulge out. That's bad design. So we are going to reshape the front of the blouse so in reshaping it all i need to do is to look for the midpoint so i look for the midpoint of that 10 inch which is five then i look for the midpoint of five which is two and a half so it is at this point i'm going to take it in a little so as to reduce bulge around here so 
We have Mark in the middle here, yeah, taking half in, just half in. That's just how much I'm holding. Then I use my French pot to reconstruct the what we have in. So now I cannot add new seed allowance. So from here, start. I'll put two, these two together so that you see the difference. You can see the front is now a bit deeper than the back. After sewing that basic blouse, this is the finished result that you will get. You can see how lovely and shapely that is. Mind you, this is the back. You can see it's high here, and this will be the front.